Greetings, this is Spec Ops 56 and my faithful Indian companion, John Toe. And today we're going to be doing a special nostalgic uh, type of review uh, on the vintage sodas that uh, both of us had as our favorite, remember as our favorites from when we were kids. So you know how long ago that had to be. Uh, I was inspired to do this video by the one done by the Judkins, as usual, <laughs> from the Judkins Journey. They did a vintage soda review, and I had asked them if they had ever heard of some of the ones that were my childhood favorites, and they said they hadn't, which isn't, which isn't unexpected since uh, mine were all regional southeast uh, Carolinas brands that uh, until recently didn't expand out beyond the Carolinas. <laughs> so um, we're going to be, the way we're going to do this is uh, I've got two of my favorites uh, from when I was a child and John picked two of his and we're going to alternate. We're going to review one of mine. I'm going to tell you a little bit of uh, history of the soda and I'll tell you a little bit of uh, what I remember about uh, about it uh, having it and where I had it and just why it was my favorite so we're going to start off with one of my childhood favorites called Kickapoo Joy Juice <laughs> Now, uh, some of you who have used to watch, read the old uh, Little Abner uh, cartoons in the newspapers, if you're that old, will recognize that name. And uh, let me give you a little bit of information about this. The Kickapoo Joy Juice is a citrus flavored soft drink brand owned by the Monarch Beverage Company. The name was originally introduced in a Little Abner a comic strip that ran from 1934 through 1977. Now, Little Abner's uh, Kickapoo Joy Juice was an alcoholic drink, but the real world beverage is obviously not. Now, the Kickapoo Joy Juice was a fictional beverage coined in the American comic strip Little Abner. Al Cap, the cartoonist, described the beverage as a liquor of such stupefying potency that the hardiest citizens of Dog Patch, after the first burning sip, rose into the air stiff as frozen codfish. It was said to be an elixir of such power that the fumes alone would have been known to melt the rivets off battleships. Which, um, that's a pretty potent view, brew. But luckily this isn't quite that strong. Um, he said, uh, the Al Cap asserted in 1965 that the cartoon never has suggested the drink was moonshine. In response to claims that the Kickapoo Joy Juice of Little Abner was an illicitly distilled liquor. Brewed by Hairless Joe and Lonesome Polecat, two of the comic strip's backwood poachers, the ingredients of the brew are both mysterious and all-encompassing. Okay, well enough of that. The real world drink, this right here, was introduced in 1965 under New Grape, a former brand of the Monarch Beverage Company. That year, New Grape worked out a deal with Al Cap, the owner of the Kickapoo Joy Juice Rights, to produce the beverage as a carbonated soft drink. Cap, however, would have last word on all advertising and promotion. Kickapoo's Joy Juice's early advertising campaign was very similar to Mountain Dew's of the time, and I kind of remember that using characters from Little Abner to create and market a hillbilly feeling. Um, it says, uh, blah, 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 da, 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 okay. Wall Street Journal had a regular feature on mixed drinks. And once 
published in it a recipe for Kickapoo Joy Juice. The backstory is that it was originally illicit hooch ginned up by soldiers during World War II, often starting from alcohol intended for fuel for torpedoes and the like. And yeah, that's probably true, <laughs> if you know sailors and especially bubbleheads. All right, now, uh, it was introduced in 1965. In 1965, I was nine years old, so it probably would have been when I had my very first one, because I know I was, I was young, so I wasn't more than 10 years old. And I think one of the reasons why I specifically uh, liked it was because of the cool name. <laughs> I mean, you know, to a nine, ten-year-old kid, Kickapoo Joy Juice, that's pretty cool. Um, by the way, this is not what the original uh, bottle looked like, so uh, let me show you uh, a look at what the original bottle would have looked like, right over here. Okay, now, uh, Kickapoo Joy Juice as I recall, and I haven't had one of these since I was a kid, I wasn't even aware that they still were making it until just recently. Uh, Kickapoo Joy Juice, as I recall, tasted sort of like a cross between Mountain Dew and 7-Up or Sprite. Um, a little more on the 7-Up Sprite side than on the Mountain Dew side. Um, I remember where I got my first Kickapoo Joy Juice. Uh, my grandmother lived in Lake City, South Carolina. And within walking distance for a nine, 10 year old boy, about two, three blocks from her house was an old timey general store. And I mean, we're talking the kind of old timey general store that you would see in 1930s movies. This is the kind with the porch and the board the rough board floors and the dust on the floor and the peanut shells on the floor. It had the, it had the, uh, the wood stove uh, with the chairs around it uh, for heating it. You got your sodas out of one of the big floor chest types that uh, you opened up the lid and you reached in and you had to kind of navigate through a couple of uh, corrals there and then pull it up out of it and it had a built-in bottle opener on the front. And that's where I had my first Kickapoo Joy Juice. Um, this was also a place where whenever I was visiting my grandmother, I always went there. I'd get a, I'd get a Kickapoo Joy Juice or I might get an RC Cola. Um, I would get uh, moon sh uh, Moonshine. No, not Moonshine. <laughs> moon Pie. <laughs> Let's make that clear. I got Moon Pie when I was a nine-year-old boy and uh, that sort of thing. Uh, and also, I remember my favorite thing to get from there was the, uh, it, it was the, the orange cream sickles. And they were good. All right, back to the soda. Uh, that's kind of the history of me and Kickapoo so Joy Juice. So John, why don't you come over here, have a seat, and reorient the, uh, <laughs> Uh, the camera so you'll be in the picture and we will give the Kickapoo Joy Juice a try. Now, as I understand it from the website, they have added I think three other flavors uh, to the Kickapoo Joy Juice line, but this is the original. Okay. Right. Uh, okay. Well, it looks like I remember it. All right, now, since this is not a beer review, we're not going to worry about uh, what kind of flavors and nuances no. we can get on the nose. We're just going to taste it. So let's have at it. Does it taste like you remember? It tastes just like I remember it. I'll be darn. Like... I said, like a, with, a, with a very mild Mountain Dew type of flavor, mm -hmm. but with more of a, of a Sprite slash 7-Up flavor to it. I never really cared that much for Mountain Dew, uh, because to me the Mountain Dew was too sweet. Mm -hmm. 
this is not. Um, now, I think I maybe remember it being sweeter, but this may be because it was a nine-year-old boy's palate. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, yeah, this tastes just just like I remember it. And I like the fact that it's mild, and it is made with real sugar. So None of that artificial stuff. And it's not stuff. overly carbonated. It's, it's lightly carbonated, a lot less than you get with Mountain Dew. And you tell me what you think. I like it. You're right. It's not as sweet as Mountain Dew. Did you ever drink, uh, I mean, was Kickapoo, Joy Juice, anything that you had as a kid? Uh-uh. Not this one. No. I don't remember it. Hmm. Okay. Well, like I said, Kickapoo Joy Juice was one of those that it really wasn't out of the southeast until much later. Uh, so, uh, I, I will... Um, tag on uh, between this segment and the next segment which will be John's uh, a few more interesting Kickapoo Joy Juice things advertisements and and that sort of thing so that uh, you can get an idea of what it what it looked like and uh, what it was like when I was a kid so uh, we're going to uh, get set up for John's part of this segment and uh, we'll be right back. Okay. Well, I wanted to do a little short video on one of my favorite drinks that I first started on. Uh, back when I was a child, maybe 12, 13 years old, and it was New Grape. As you can see here. I'm doing the camera, so you guys <laughs> can't blame John for this. Okay, I'm going to put it back okay. down. All right. New Grape was invented in 1906. Uh, it started being put in bottles in 1921. And uh, you know the secret formula has got to be good for this. It's being been around that long. It's a grape flavored soda pop. Uh, and by April 1933, the National New Grape Company was founded in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, in 1922, licensing rights were sold to the Ola Bottling Works in Ola, Louisiana, where it was made and distributed for many years. Uh, New Grape was followed up by the popular Suncrest brand of soft drinks in 1938. In 1965, New Grape uh, introduced Kickapoo Joy Juice, a product based on Al Cap's Little Abner comic strip, of course. Uh, all three brands were acquired in 1968 by the Moxie Company, renamed Moxie Monarch New Grape Company, and later Monarch Beverage. In 1970, Monarch Moxie New Grape discontinued domestic U.S. sales of Kickapoo Joy Juice. In 1999, New Grape and the Nesbitt's line of carbonated drinks were acquired from Monarch uh, in Atlanta by Big Red Limited of Waco, Texas, under its Northern Beverages Products uh, Division, which uh, also included Nesbitt 6. The New Grape building still exists in Atlanta. Uh, today, New Grape is found in parts of the southeast United States, sold specifically uh, like Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Northwest Alabama, and eastern half of Tennessee. Uh, New Grape is almost impossible to find west of the Mississippi. Uh, it's bottled in central Kentucky by the AL8 One Bottling Company of Winchester, Kentucky, and in the Pacific Northwest by Orca Beverage Company 
of Mukilteo, Washington. It's most commonly in small novelty candy stores. Uh, certain restaurants also sell some of these. Cracker Bell for one. Yeah, that's where we got that one. That's was, yep. So let me uh, reframe and then I'll come over there. All right. And make sure we got it. I'm not as smooth as good as this at, as John, as you all know by now. So doing the best I can. I hope that's got it. All right. Gonna have to. All right, you ready to try some of this? I am. Now you need to tell us about uh, how you first got well, drinking New Grape. I so. used to spend a lot of my summers at my grandparents in Bishopville, South Carolina, which is a small town. And like in your case, uh, about two, three blocks away was a little country store run by an elderly lady. And in the afternoons I'd walk down there, and I'd always up for a New Grape. Uh, some candy, squirrel nut zippers, and a little bag of Mary Janes, and walk my merry way back to the house and yeah. sit on the porch and drink them. And just as a note, uh, you know, way back then, uh, Mary Janes meant something entirely different than it does today. <laughs> oh, definitely <laughs> does. <laughs> yeah, actually, I don't think that I've ever had new grape. When I had, I had a grape soda. It was usually a knee-high grape or a grape crush. Yeah. Really don't think I ever had a new grape, so this should be interesting. Let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. Mmm. It's as I remember. Very well, grapey. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's got the right amount of carbonation. It's not overly sweet. It reminds me of knee-high grape. Yeah. It sure does. And I remember grape crush was a bit stronger. I don't remember but, that. Uh, yeah, this, this is good. This reminds me of knee high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a very, a very mild uh, grape yeah. soda flavor. But it's really good. That's and I think this must be made with real sugar too. I think it probably is. It's a sweet it's taste. Because uh, it's not overly sweet. No. It doesn't have that... Yeah artificial sweeteners that they put in everything these days. Well, we'll be uh, putting some advertising and, and other things uh, at the tail end of this segment to show you what the, it used to look like back when we were young. And now, of course, there's someone at the door, so that's it for <laughs> this segment. Uh, stay tuned for part two. <laughs> Who would have guessed? Yeah, of course. <laughs>